Butterfly, with Cole, the brand of the lifestyle. Electromagnetic. I am that I am that I am that I am that I am. What we working with? How we are? Yo. Yo. Darkness around me. Channeling that darkness inside. Focus, that's the things that I will see. All real niggas divine is the mind, yeah. All real niggas divine is the mind, and we manifesting darkness around me. Channeling that darkness inside. Focus, that's the things that I will see. All real niggas divine is the mind, yeah. All real niggas divine is the mind, I'ma focus on that darkness around me. Bringing all that darkness inside. All real niggas divine is the mind. Chaos in the flesh, God in every breath. Yo. And the manifested, channeling that darkness around me. Focusing that darkness inside. Divine, that's the things that I will see. All real niggas divine is the mind, yeah. All real niggas divine is the mind, tell them. Channeling that darkness around me. So now I will feel no passion or aggression at all. Alas, now I will never again feel passion and aggression by concentrating your mind intensely and one pointedly on this thought that itself will close the womb entrance. So the tantras say, O oh, child of noble family, do not be distracted. Concentrate your mind one pointedly. But if even after doing this, the womb entrance is not closed and you are about to enter A, then it should be closed by the instruction of the unreal and illusory nature of everything. Meditate in this way. Alas, the father and mother, the great storm, the whirlwind, the thunder, the terrifying projections, and all these apparent phenomena are illusory in their real nature. However they appear, they are not. All substances are false and untrue. They are like a mirage. They are not permanent. They are not changeless. What is the use of desire? What is the use of fear? It is regarding the non-existent as existent. All these are projections of my mind. And since the mind itself is illusory and non-existent from the beginning, from where externally do they arise like this, I did not understand in this way before. And so I believe the non-existent to exist, the untrue to be true, the illusion to be real. Therefore, I have wandered in samsara for so. And if I do not realize that they are illusions, I shall still wander in samsara for a long time and certainly fall into the muddy swamp of suffering. Now they are all like dreams, like illusions, like echoes, like cities of the Ganharvas. Like mirages, like images, like optical illusions, like the moon in water, they are not real. Even for a moment, certainly they are not true, but falses by concentrating one pointedly on this conviction, belief in their reality is destroyed. And when one is inwardly convinced in such a way belief in A, he's counteracted. If you understand unreality like this from the bottom of your heart, the womb entrance will certainly be closed. But if even after doing this, the belief in reality is not destroyed and the womb entrance is not closed, and you are about to enter a womb, there is a profound instruction, O oh, child of noble family. If even after doing this, the womb entrance is not closed, now it should be closed by the fifth method. Meditation on luminosity, which should be done in this way. All substances are my own mind, and this mind is emptiness, and a arisen and unobstructed thinking. This keep your mind natural and under, self-contained in its own nature, like water poured into water, just as it is loose, open, and relaxed. By letting it rest naturally and loosely, you can be sure that the womb entrance to all four kinds of birth will certainly be closed. Many true and profound instructions for closing the womb entrance have been given above. It is impossible for anyone of high, average, or low capacities, whichever he may, not to be liberated by them. Why is this? Firstly, because consciousness in the Bido state possesses supernatural perception of worldly things, so he can't hear what I say. Secondly, even if he was deaf and blind, now he has all the senses complete so he can hear what is said. Thirdly, being continually overcome by fear. He is thinking undistracted what? So he listens to what I say. And fourthly, as the consciousness has no support, it comes directly to wherever the concentration is directed. So it is easy to guide the mind is nine times more clear. So even if he is stupid, by force of karma, the mind becomes so clear at this time that it can meditate on whatever is taught essential. Such as these are the reason for the same reason. 
It is also helpful to perform the rituals for the dead. Therefore, it is very important to persevere in reading this great liberation through hearing for up to nine days. Even if he is not liberated, that one showing he will attain liberation and another. That is the reason why not one, but many showings are necessary. Even then, there are many kinds of people who are not used to doing good actions, but were extremely skilled in doing evil actions right from the start and true. The influence of many powerful veils of air are not liberated in spite of being shown and given these objects of meditation so many times above. So, if the womb entrance has not been closed before, a profound instruction for choosing the womb entrance would be taught below. One should call on the Buddhas and for help and repeat the refuge. Then call the dead person by name three times and say these words. O child of noble family who is dead, listen, although you have been shown with the instructions above so many times, you have not understood. So now if the womb entrance has not been closed, the time has come to take a body. So we know death isn't the end, right? Because as I've said many times before, we have it reversed in this world. We think what we're doing now in this physical mundane world is living. Okay, it's reversed because when you really look at the process, okay? Number one, the moment you proceed out of the womb of your mother, you begin to die. Because once you come out of the womb and you start to evolve and age, and grow as you become older the body starts to wear down the old age kicks in sometimes disease and sickness etc you live to die and people don't understand what that means this is not the, the realm of eternity or eternal life the, the way you came from is where that quote unquote eternal life exists now when you go back into the void and the abyss you have to look at the fact that you swam around in the chaotic waters of darkness for nine months before you physically emerged onto this plane or of existence or this physical realm. You swam around in the womb of your mother, which was a sack of water. It's, it's no different when you read about Tiamat or the primordial chaotic waters. You, you were bathed and submerged in chaos. First you came from pure darkness, and then you were bathed in the dark chaotic waters, and then you were birthed into this universe. But where you came is the realm of eternal life, and where you incarnated to is just a temporary stop. It's just one of your many physical manifestations. Now we'll see if we get to reincarnation, which is a very touchy subject, because there's just a lot of theories out there. Um, I've always said to really understand uh, and, 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 and really dig deep into the mysteries of reincarnation. That's going to come through your spiritual work. Um, because again, there's, there's, there's many theories and there's many books and information out there on it. But that's one of those things that one has to raise themselves up to the realization in your ritual and your spiritual work. Okay. Now. The crazy thing is, when you are doing your ritual work, a lot of those things are revealed to you. It's a lot of us, we've been here many times before. We know this. This isn't our first stop, right? We know we've reincarnated on this plane multiple times. And we've confirmed that it's personal, right? It, it's not something I would suggest if you come to that realization in your spiritual work. It's not really your job to try to convince other people of that. That's something personal that you confirm for yourself to help you understand yourself and your spiritual journey. Now, me, based on my experience over the years of dealing with people, uh, I'm in alignment with, yes, we, we've been here many times before. This isn't our first stop. All right, we'll touch a little bit more on that uh, time permitted. So very important that we have to factor a lot of things in to understanding what death, dying, and the afterlife uh, truly is, all right? So we can't fear change, okay? That's something that you can't because, again, anything that doesn't change dies, okay? We like our routines. People don't like change. People like comfort zones. We fear change, okay? We like our routines to be established, and these are important things. That's what gets us through the day. That's what gets us through our days. That's what makes us get our jobs done. 
uh, that we survive and continue and so on, but we must also embrace change through transformation because this is what life and renewal is all about. Because absolute stability, absolute stillness, lack of change, that is true death. That's true death. Anything that doesn't change, that is what you need to fear. So people can become complacent. People can get set in their ways. And as, as Michael Kelly says here in this pamphlet, uh, people get in comfort zones. So when change comes, it's hard for people. And as I said many times before, when you're on this path, you must always be open and ready for the changes that this path brings, okay? So you can view death with some trepidation. You can be anxious, a bit nervous about it. We all have our, our anxieties and fears. Again, let's be real. A lot of us, when we started out on our spiritual journey, regardless of where we came from and where we are now, one of the motivating factors of why we study spirituality or from whatever paths we came and where we're at now is because we wanted further clarity on what this thing called death in the afterlife is, if we were real with ourselves, right? We knew in some of these lesser religions like Christianity and Judaism and Islam, it was very limited on what we were being told. There was a lot of mythology, right? And none of those so-called holy books give you 100% clarity on exactly what happens to the soul and the spirit when it separates from the physical body. It doesn't give you detailed information. I'm not talking about little things that may allude to it. Even some of the, as I said, some of the ancient texts like the Tibetan Book of the Dead, the coming forth by day. Even when you get into the opening of the mouth ceremony, right? You're looking at rituals and works that, that these individuals were imparting, these masters were imparting to try to show what happens when one makes that transition? Greetings, fam. What is dead? When you hear someone has died, somebody transcended, you get it in the news, you hear it over the phone, you get the message somehow that a close one to you, a close relative, a brother, a friend, has transcended, has died. What does that mean to you? What is dead? In the sense of the word, how do you understand that to be? What does that mean to you? Leave a comment in the comment section. Let's have a conversation about it. What do you think that is? What does it mean to you? Does that mean a transformation, a transcendence, a continuation, or is it the beginning of a new life? Or is it the end? I guess we gotta go back to that fundamental question of where do we go? Where do we go after death? Is there a place that we exist after this transcendence, after the beginning, after the end, where do we go? Where? Where is this place called heaven? I know there's a nourish goddess called hell. So where is heaven? I'm pretty sure there's an entity, goddess, or a masculine perspective thereof that bears that name or some semblance to that. So we know that this is all allegory about ourselves. So where do we go? Is there a place that we do go to? after we transcend, after the beginning, after the end, in death, where is this place that we go to, right? And why do we die? Ultimately, because we know it's not because we did a bad thing or because we did a good thing. We know it's most times because the physical is no longer able to withstand the experience that we call life. But why do we ultimately transcend? Why do we die? Why was this physical design like that? What do you guys think? Persons that are watching, let's make it interactive. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let's have a conversation about it. Where do you think we go? Where do we go? And when? When is it okay for us to die? When is this so-called life expectancy? And is it an okay life expectancy? And is there an upgrade every couple of years? And why is there an upgrade? And is it okay to say that life expectancy is getting shorter or longer? What is shorter or longer in perspective to the all? And this even more important question that I know a lot of us have in our mind is can we speak with those who have transcended? Can we communicate with those who have come to the close in this life and have started their forever experience in the great life beyond? 
Can we communicate with entities that was once alive, quote-unquote, but are no longer alive, quote-unquote? What is death? Is there communication after the death of someone? Can they communicate with those that are still in this so-called realm of the living? Is there a conversation that we have? Is there other ways that they can communicate with us? What do you think? Did you ever communicate with anyone that had transcended before? And if so, how did you do it? Let's hear how Queen of Swords did it. You want to communicate to somebody you know that passed away? It's very easy. All you got to do is talk. Talk in your mind. You know how you be talking to yourself? That's how you communicate with the dead. So another thing I noticed, years of studying are called and practicing astral projection and communicating with the other side is <laughs> when you talk when you talk in your mind, basically your mind is is a dimension. Your mind is actually a dimension. So if you're talking to somebody in your mind that passed away, that's another dimension. Your mind is, is actually a dimension, multidimensional. Your mind is multidimensional. Facts. So when you communicate with somebody that you know or love that passed away, you talk to them in your mind because they could hear you when you talk in your mind. They could hear you. Talk to them in your mind and say what you got to say. Say their name. And they definitely going to hear you. That's all you got to do. It's that easy. Just talk in your mind to the person you know that passed away. And they're going to hear you. Whatever you got to tell them, they're going to hear you. You know, you do it in a meditative state. You do it in a meditative state. And make sure you're in a good-ass mood. Don't be, don't be talking to them feeling all fucking depressed and shit. vibration when you're communicating. You can't be communicating with mad about them not being here no more and shit like that. To the Mercedes experience. Hell, I don't even know if I can handle it for y'all. I think I'm going to stop thinking about it. Don't worry, you can't get yourself in a blender. He swears by his all natural sex potion, but it's just Irish moss and whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the coach sees us when you do. To the 